OK, so I have grouped all my orange elements and I've grouped all my green elements. And I've passed my design so that I've got no unnecessary trims and no unnecessary jumps or tie stitches. But now I'm going to have a small jump, much as I might like not to. And it's going to be from here to the paws because now I'm going to do the body. I want colour that you can all see so I'll do it in dark pink and I'm going to pick up my weave fill tool. There you go, that little grey thing there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all my underlay options. That's all I'm going to do in there for a minute. I'm going to set my densities in a moment and I'm going to lay my first node about there. Okay, second, maybe drop that down there. I'll just work my way around my shape. Now this is going to be my underlay. I like doing my own underlays. And this particular method suits me down to the ground. OK, click back on the last node. Click up here. Now, there's no law that says you have to use the auto underlays. And then lay my last node away from the first node and then just move it on and then just move my other nodes bring that down inside the head a bit. Right, that's all those in place. And I'm going to right click till it finish object. Right click inside of it again. Go to parameters. Set my density. Now, this is what models a lot of people up if they watch my other videos. Because in my other videos for the genome or the generation, you will hear me talk about a density of 0.4 and a density of 0.45. In Embered, 0.4 is 4.0. I think I'll make a chart up later. This underlay, I want a density of 2.5 if I was using my other software. In Embered, that is 25. And I'm not going to go into why it is that Embered uses this particular method of expressing the densities. It isn't complicated, but I tend to make it complicated which is not fair on you. Complete if rows if density is above 10. Now that's actually one millimeter. I'm going to tell it now, generate stitches. There is the first layer of my underlay. I right click into that blue bar in my object bar and I tell it duplicate. Now I know a lot of people say you shouldn't use duplicate because it doesn't put your duplicate exactly on the spot. That doesn't bother me. Now I want to go to edit and there is my start point. So I'm going to right click on that and say place start point here. And then I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to say place fill end point here. And then I'm going to hold down my P key. That's P for Peter on my keyboard and move the arrowhead until it gets to 90 on the little clock face over here. In fact, I'll finish it off over here now. And to take it up, I left click on the numbers. And once it's at 90, I just tell it, generate stitches. And now I've got a grid underlay covering the whole of my rabbit's ears, head, body, paws. So now I don't need any more underlay for this rabbit. I've done it all in one go. So I click off that. I go and pick up the fill tool again. No, actually I don't want the fill tool. I want the 
column we fill tool. That's this one. That was the Collins satin, the blank one, just there while my mouse is dodging around. And directly below it, that's the column fill. I want the B option again, and we'll set the density in a moment. I want my numeral 3 key. There it is. And I'm going to end up with the jump if I continue. So I'm not going to continue. I'm going to do a travel line down to here. So I'll tell that stop. And go and pick up my run line tool. Click my numeral 3 key. That's the first node. And put that around there. End this where I want my... I'm going to put it down here. That's it. And tell that generate stitches. Now I'm going to pick up that column fill tool. Press my numeral 3 key. There's my first node. I put my second node on. My third. Oops. I clicked the wrong side. My fourth. And just as we did the leaf, come up the side of this ear. Click into that inside one, tell it to line. Up here, another one here. No, it's not going to let me do that. Click on that one. I'm not at a high enough magnification. So just a second. There we go. Pick up the node because I've lost my tool momentarily here. And I want to drop the magnifying glass, so I have to pick up that node on a line. And that gives me back my tool immediately. Right, I click on that node and I tell it to line because I don't want it interfering. And I put that one down here. And then I do the next node up here. And then I continue on down. I'll finish that under his head. And then I hooch out my nodes to give it a nice shape. Because we want our rabbit to look attractive. OK. Now you can get very pernickety when you're digitizing. I know I do. I'm an awful fiddler. But there really is no point, you know. By the time the sewing machine stitches this out, all this wonderful messing around with moving nodes a little bit, you might just as well have saved yourself time. But then that takes some of the pleasure out of it. I like, as I say, just fidgeting around with things. So I'm going to tell that finish object. And I'm going to go back into parameters. And I'm going to set the parameters. I want a density of 4.5, which in any other program is 0.45. Tell that OK. I want a pull compensation of 3 tenths of a millimeter. Pull will still be a problem, but not such a problem if you're using the weave fill. I do not want any underlay. I have no need for any underlay. I don't want auto corners. I do want auto shortening. That shortens the stitches here so as we don't get big build ups. And I want perpendicular stitches. And I am not making a fancy stitch pattern. I tell that apply. There are my ears, or there is one of my ears. And then I tell it generate. And in the next video, we will do the other ear. So I'll see you all in the next video.